this market. I am a leader of the people in this market. Please help us because we are being killed by Shylocks. When we borrow a thousand shillings in the morning, in the evening, you must return that 1,000 shillings with 200 shillings on top. That is 20,000, that is 20 percent per day. Assuming even you work on half that, that's 10 percent per day. If you calculate it per year, it is 3,600 percent per year. That is the kind of interest the people, these 10 million people pay to access credit. William Ruto and Bishop Okinde here, we access credit at 14% per year. So just look at the difference. 14% per year, 3,600 per year. Just making sure that these 10 million Kenyans have access to credit and don't even say cheap credit. The same, at the same level as Kenya Airways, Safaricom, or the big corporates access credit. If we just make them access credit at 14%, like everybody else, we will increase their earnings from 300 shillings to 700 shillings per day, just by sorting out credit. And in eight years, we will double the size of the economy of Kenya. Yeah? And maybe when I say this, it looks simplistic. I used to think it is simplistic also. Until I became deputy president and I realized that actually government can make things happen. That's why I said government can make the impossible happen. Miracles take slightly longer. Okay. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? So, so bottom up is about sorting out the millions of our young people who are jobless so that they can begin the journey to climb the economic ladder, have a job so that they can run their lives, run their families, and build our country, getting the millions of people who are doing all these odd jobs and making sure that we have, um, they have access to credit, they have access to a good place to do business. We organize them. Uh, Johnson Sakaja is here. Instead of him running around with hawkers in Nairobi, formalize. We have said as a Kenya Panza administration, we have agreed with Johnson Sakaja here, who is our candidate for Nairobi, that with the few markets we have in Nairobi, we will build an extra 20 modern markets in the city of Nairobi alone. Just as a way of getting the people who are hanging their wares all over the place into a formal uh, place where they can do their business and making sure that we get rid of contempt for the hassles of ordinary people. That's why I have said every hassle matters. And finally, just by way of uh, responding to uh, the bottom-up economic model, is to make sure that we not only promote, because we had a wonderful plan on economic, no, uh, agricultural transformation, to make sure that we increase the productivity of ordinary farmers. We have 12 million farming uh, households yeah, who are producing below what they should be producing. And all they need is access to fertilizer that is subsidized, access to good quality seed, a 
farmer who is producing six, seven bags because they don't have the money to buy the right seed, they don't have the money to access fertilizer. If we made sure that they have access to fertilizer and access to quality seed, their five bags they are producing can be doubled. In just one season, you can double it. Uh, let me give you another example, finally. We produce five billion liters of milk. Five billion liters of milk. We are among us the largest milk producers in the continent. If we are not number one, we are number two. That's Kenya, right? And we are doing on average maybe three liters per cow. Three liters. And it's because we do not have the correct. We haven't thought about how to, uh, about animal feed. We still import a lot of animal feed, raw materials, soya, canola, sunflower, um, simsim. We, we, we import all. I was having a discussion in Busia um, last week, and we were discussing simsim. Busia is among, is actually the fourth poorest county in Kenya. I'm sorry, Bishop Okindo, I know that is your county. <laughs> Neighboring county, sorry. <laughs> yeah? It's the fourth poorest county in Kenya. And yet, there exists huge opportunities in oil crops, starting with simsim, starting with soya, going to uh, palm oil. You know, yet we are importing all this. And for your information, we are spending 190 billion Kenya shillings every year to import food items into Kenya, which we can grow. 190 billion uh, Kenya shillings. Edible oil alone, 80 billion shillings of edible oil we are importing. And these are things we can grow. So, what am I saying? The people, the farmers who today are languishing in poverty, we can increase their incomes, actually double their incomes. Like the one of milk I, I told you, if we just get the correct animal feed by making sure that farmers grow sunflower, we grow soya, we make sure that we, we have enough uh, raw material, we can actually, for every cow, forget about the cows that are producing 40 liters per day. Even if we just moved our average from 3 to 10, we would increase our milk production from 5 billion liters to 15 billion liters. Forget about 15 billion liters, 10 billion liters. Do you know what that will do? Milk will overtake all our um, uh, horticulture and what and what as a foreign exchange earner. And that does not require 10 years. It requires two seasons and we are there. So I am so clear in my mind as to what, how we can change this country in our lifetime. We don't have to wait for 20 years. We can change Kenya in 10, 15 years. And whoever was not in our country will not recognize it when they come back. Now, all this that you've said is good and indeed can work, should work, must work. But when we are in a state of insecurity, then nothing gets realized. With every election cycle, unfortunately, insecurity seems to always crop up. We have ethnic mobilization. In recent times, we've had uh, lapses, security lapses in uh, Kerio Valley Triangle, Marsabit, Garissa, Laikipia, Lamu. We can only fear what might happen. That's a real fear. And it may even keep some away from turning up to vote, your voters and for others. So what assurance are you giving the Kenyans that they shall not, should not incite against each other 
to be peaceful before, during, and after, practically speaking? I think you've, you've talked about, uh, I mean, your, the issue you've raised has three facets from where I sit. We have insecurity because of criminals and crooks and terrorists and all these bad people, which we must firmly and decisively deal with as, as government. Um, we had a program on making sure that we have police reservists in many of these areas. And in fact, we deployed extensively um, police reservists. Um, in fact, some of the counties, like Turkana, I remember, even helped to pay stipend for some of these police uh, reservists who are really helping with matter security. We must continue to invest in the software, in the human, in the human resource, and in the hardware to make sure that we secure ourselves from criminals. And we already have a reasonably uh, big budget on matters to do with security. What we must do, however, is we must make sure that we get value for the resources we deploy in security. What will I do differently? I will make sure that buying guns is not a security issue. Why is buying a gun by the government? Why is it in mystery? Why is it in some dark room? Why? The guns are being carried all over in the streets by policemen. So what is the big deal? Today, they are classified as security purchases. So a gun that is supposed to be sold for 20,000 is bought at 60,000. Why? Oh, it's a security thing, so it cannot be done by open tender. It must be done in some dark room. It must be... I, I have been against those uh, uh, stories because these security secret things, that is where corruption thrives. We must get, if we got value for the money we are putting in our security sector, we would get maybe twice or thrice the output we are currently getting. Right? Number two, we must get the IG. What I will do is to get the IG his own budget. The constitution says the IG is an independent office. Today, the IG doesn't have a budget. He relies on the office of the president for a budget. You know? And so, he has to speak nicely to some people at the office of the president. Why? The IG is an independent office. When I ask somebody, why, why are we bringing matters to do with the inspector general of police? Why doesn't he have his own accounting officer when the constitution says it should ha they should have its own accounting officer? Somebody was telling me, oh, you know, you can't give somebody guns and give them money. If they have guns, you must keep the money so that you keep, uh, you know, giving them enough for them not to cause trouble. You know, first day, I will appoint an accounting officer for the inspector general of police and the police department and give them an independent budget and demand, <laughs> demand from them. Because if, if, if you are giving somebody's budget, you are unable to demand from them. Because they will say, but you know, boss, you know, eh, we didn't get this money, you know, we asked for this, we didn't get, we asked for this, we didn't get. So, make the Inspector General of Police truly independent, and then I will demand from them why this is not happening here, why this is not happening here, why this is not happening here. I have told you two things already on that.
The other issue that is bringing about insecurity is, of course, poverty. You know? You have all these young people. They are loitering our streets. They are out of school. They have no jobs. They become pickpockets. Then they become gangs. Then they become terrorists. You know? So we have to deal with the matter of economic inclusivity, making sure that our young people have a job to do, they are meaningfully engaged, or they have credit to do business. And finally, is the third category of insecurity, the political uh, gangs you know, sponsored, you know, driven by politicians and politics. I, I am a strong believer that we need to institutionalize our politics around political parties. I, I am a very strong believer that the best way to move our politics away from personality cults and ethnicity is to build strong national parties. That is why I was very heartbroken when the party I spent so much time to build called Jubilee was destroyed. Yeah? By tribalists, people who don't believe uh, in Kenya. But thank God I am not complaining too much. We have put together another national political party called UDA. Today, in every poll, UDA is the most popular party in Kenya. And it is because we believe that politics should be played around institutions of governance. Political parties must form the basis for canvassing our politics so that our politics is about issues. It's not about the person. It's not about personality cults. It's not about the tribe of the person leading the party. It's about the issues the party stands for. And that is why today, whether you like it or not, if you speak about UDA, people will think about bottom-up more than they will think about William Ruth. Now, as we get towards the end, in all these we need to have, and you mentioned I think in terms of the software side of things, national values. When we say chapter 6, I'm sure Dr. Ginde, it uh, will not be about uh, chapter 6 in the Bible of any book that you pick. When you say chapter 6 in the Constitution, championing it, to what extent would your administration champion chapter 6 because other things will fall in place no matter how well-intentioned and implementation of the economic model and other things come in. <clears throat> uh, you, that's a very important component of the Kenya we want. Um, from where I sit, I think religion and education must be centralized in making sure that we have a country that has a moral compass. Um, I have been accused of engaging in building churches. I have built as many mosques as well. And it is because I believe the church and religion and the belief in God by the people of Kenya is central to our success. Um, I am happy that the church and religious institutions are beginning to realize that they can no longer remain neutral. There is this thing the church keeps, oh, you know, we are neutral, 
we are neutral. But the Bible says you are either warm or you are cold. You can't be somewhere there. I, I don't know which part of the scripture is neutral. You know? Maybe I need to be schooled. You know? So, I think the centrality of the believing God, the centrality of our religious institutions, the centrality of the church in making sure that we have a country that has morals. The influence of our religious institution in our education is very important. the church must take sides. I have always taken sides. I take sides on the side of God. Always. And I am unapologetic. And I am unashamed. I believe in God. And I cannot go somewhere and then I say, oh, you know, I am neutral. I am not neutral. I am not neutral. I believe in God. The place of education, we have to continuously refine our education so that it speaks to the values of our society. The church, religious institutions, um, those who are Muslims and those who believe in God must have a stake in uh, the Republic of Kenya. And I don't know whether uh, there are many issues that the church uh, um, want to raise with government. I know, for example, that the church have issues with the way taxation is fashioned in our country. Sometimes you're taxing the church for carrying out social activities, public good activities. There needs to be a discussion about that. There is uh, uh, the place of um, uh, uh, the church and, and, and owning property. Where, what is the place of government in assisting the church to own public property that they can use for public good? To build a church, to build um, um, a rehab, to build um, a children's home, you know, and those kind of things. That's a discussion I am willing to have. But the church must step forward. You know, they cannot continue to be in a neutral place <laughs> where, where they, they don't know whether they're going right or they're... <laughs> now, and I'm, I'm saying this because yes. I'm a Christian right. and uh, I'm speaking my heart, you know. Um, and... Um, I know, for example, that we've had issues with the registration of churches in Kenya. There's a moratorium and uh, uh, it needs to be discussed. What is the nature of this moratorium? It is for how many days? What are the reasons? The church again must step forward and have a conversation uh, with government. But the church also has an opportunity to install a government. Yes. Excellent. They, they, they have an opportunity to install a government. Instead of waiting yeah. until others install government for you, and then you go and start complaining to the government, why don't you install the government yourselves? But I did this. That's, that's, that's clear. 
given to people who don't vote or who don't get involved in matters politics is to be ruled by fools. So, if we continue to be bystanders, you know, and let me, let me say this, allow me to say this. The first time I, I thought of being a politician, and the first time I decided to show signs of um, um, wanting to be a politician, my very good friends, who we were in uh, our evangelistic team together, I remember one of them, he, he was, he's a doctor today in Akuru. Um, he's, told, he's called Dr. Ngetich. They wanted to lay hands on me. How can you be a politician? You know, how, how can you be a politician? This is meant for people who don't know God, you know. That's a while back. I know we have made a lot of progress to where we are today. But you know, sometimes there are people who think that being in politics, they believe this narrative that politics is a dirty game. But the Bible says it's God who chooses leaders. It cannot be that God involved, is involved in dirty stuff. I don't think so. So, I mean... <laughs> I, just to speak the truth, yeah. the church needs to up her game. One thing I can assure you, the church is not neutral on values, but neutral on the candidates. That without any fear of contradiction. Now, I'd like us to get into uh, what I'd call a rapid fire uh, session. We've received questions both online and from the audience here. Three, four questions, but brief of exclusion pastoral communities education wise. Your view? Um, the people from pastoral communities, I have called them myself, and they know it. I called all the MPs from the pastoral communities and I told them, listen. You cannot continue to depend on teachers coming from the rest of the country. We are giving you opportunity to train teachers from the pastoral communities. I have paid for a hundred teachers in Tanariba, for example, to go to training myself at a personal level. And what we need to do, the big problem, for example, in northern Kenya, is that many teachers from northern, in northern Kenya come from Nairobi, Nakuru, Siaya, and all manner of places. Very few teachers, very few people in northern Kenya go for training as teachers. And the question I ask them, why do you make the teaching of your children the business of other people? Because when one gunshot is fired, the gentleman from CIA will go to CIA. But if that person came from that village in Wargadud or some place in Wajia, whether, they, whether 10 or 20 or 50 gunshots are fired, they will stay at home. And when the gunshots are over, they will go back and teach the children. It is as simple as that. So we need to persuade more of the people from pastoral communities to uh, get uh, um, their children to go to train as teachers number one and then number two we as government we have to increase our teacher student ratio in those areas by hiring more teachers related to the same related to the same your position on free primary education and is there anything such as free christ paid the price for us on the cross it is not free salvation is not free it's paid for by government I think free is just because the parents are not paying. But of course somebody is paying. And we are all paying through our taxes. So um, I think free maybe is um, maybe the wrong, you know, uh, the, the wrong way to put it. But 
it's, it's paid for by us, by the government of Kenya, using public taxes. So your position on that? My position is that uh, it's the right thing to do. I mean, we must never disadvantage any child from... Uh, if, if there is one thing we must do, we must arm every child with good education. What we need to do is to truly make it free. I think at the moment there are still levies here and there. For example, I have heard uh, some of our governors and uh, even uh, my good governor here, Sakaja, they have promised as part of their manifesto that they will make sure that county, his county government will make sure that they pay, they have lunch for every child going to school so that we can retain more children in, in school. So lunch is an issue. Parents are being asked now to pay for lunch. It's a way of keeping more children in school. But maybe progressively, maybe that's a function county governments will take over so that we can have more children in school. And for your information, there are more children out of school in Nairobi than in Turkana. That's how serious matters education are in the city of Nairobi. So we really have to think about it. Next question here. What's your agenda on drug abuse and alcoholism eradication and how will you deal with drug peddlers? Drugs is a big issue. I don't know whether it is only with the young people or it is even with everybody including leaders we have a very serious drug problem in our country in fact some two good bishops they walked to my office about a year ago actually it was Bishop Mark Karyuki and Bishop Masinde and they told me Mr. Deputy President our children are looking at you leaders. Please make sure you are giving a good example to our children. And the subject was about drugs. Right? So it is a serious problem. And again, it goes back to the role of our religious institutions, the, 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 the correct uh, teaching standards in our schools and of course the example we set as leaders um, uh, uh, in, in, in the public space and making sure that we are because um, my daughter once came to me and asked me um, is there anything wrong with taking wine? And for a minute, I didn't know what to say. I told her, yes, of course, there is everything wrong to take, uh, taking wine. Oh, is that so? But I see very many people taking wine. You know, so <laughs> we have a real issue as parents, you know. We have to take our responsibilities very seriously as parents. We have to take our place as leaders. The church needs to take its place. Our, our teaching institutions need to take their place. This requires an army to deal with. And it requires everybody to play their role. So uh, I don't think it would be fair to apportion it and say it is this person who has failed or that person. We need a collective effort to be able to deal with them, matter of drugs. Wonderful, Buena DP. We thank you for honoring our invitation. You didn't come alone. Yeah. You came with yes. a couple of your colleagues okay. and friends. Okay. We'd like to give an opportunity to just uh, invite them, recognize them, but if you may, just go to the podium and make your, your sales uh, pitch in terms of, um, let's hear as you make your remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Edmond, for bearing with me. I know I speak a lot. 
Um, and maybe just on the one matter that uh, you said, maybe before I go there, of course, uh, I cherish the opportunity that I have been given to speak to this uh, uh, audience and to speak to others who are listening to us on other platforms. And to say, I'm, I'm very happy that um, the church, EAK, have provided this platform for many of us who are seeking opportunity to lead in various capacities, to be able to engage with you, to listen to some of the issues, and for you also to listen to us, so that you can make informed choices because uh, the quality of the choice you make is dependent on the quality of the information you have. Um, in our midst, uh, I have uh, friends who I came along with. I have uh, Johnson Sakaja. Johnson Sakaja is not a new member here. I, I'm told that he was a member of the Sunday School here at some point, uh, and he's running as governor of Nairobi, the city of Nairobi. I have uh, uh, Rigadi Gashagwa, I think everybody knows him. He's currently the member of parliament uh, for Madeira and uh, a, a great leader in our nation. Moses Kuria. <laughs> Moses Kuria uh, keeps reminding me that uh, he stopped, did you say that Moses? Yes. He stopped, he stopped consuming alcohol, so it's, it's good. <laughs> And then we have George uh, Sunguya. He is a member of parliament for Kajiado West. And um, we had other people here, maybe they have stepped out. Yeah. We had Kipchumba Murkomen somewhere, and they've stepped out. I think those are uh, among the people who came along with me. And uh, maybe just finally, let me say three things. Number one, um, in this election, I have very worthy competitors. And uh, I appreciate them. But in that context, I ask for your vote. Yeah. And we have a, a, a plan. We have discussed this plan. And because we are serious about implementing that plan, we have gone to every county, sat down with the people in every county, and taken them through our plan and asked them for their input and we intend to sign a charter with every county of our country on their priorities on what they expect the government of Kenya to do the next five years <clears throat> on matters to do with how we are going to get jobs on matters to do with how we are going to put food on the table on matters to do with how we are going to change our economy so that it works for everybody and on the very important matter of making sure that everybody has access to medical, um, to healthcare. So th these are the primary issues. They are not the only issues, but they are the priority issues we think will take our country uh, to the next level. And finally, because I, I do not want to speak uh, more than that, Modibo has said something which is very interesting. He said, uh, the church is not neutral on matters to do with um, values, but they are neutral on matters to do with candidates, which is fine, and I respect that. But I want somebody to explain to me what the Bible means when it says in Galatians 6.10 that as you find opportunity 
do good to all men. But especially those of the house of faith. I don't expect an answer from you. But just think about it. Thank you very much. I would like you to remain on stage as I invite uh, Dr. Makanda for this uh, final session. We are in charge and I'm sure he will uh, make the appropriate uh, response. Wisdom calls for it. Please be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Since our brothers are here, uh, I, I presume that the rhetoric question meant that uh, he's a member of the household of faith. Uh, that's what I think he presumed uh, we will get. Uh, so that you, Excellency, you are not alone. <laughs> yes. Just that your excellency, you are not alone. You have a, you can see there are others <laughs> from the household of faith. Um, this is not to put them on a, a panel. Uh, the two have already made their remarks and done their pitching. Uh, but we believe that uh, since you have come, and uh, we will do so for the others when uh, they accept our invitation and come, uh, yesterday we expected uh, yourself, uh, Deputy President, and the Honorable Prime Minister. Unfortunately, uh, uh, both of you, uh, we had some, uh, I think Safaricom failed to deliver our messages or something like that, uh, or Airtel, uh, one of those channels. Uh, and so you are not able to come, but you came today. We are hoping that uh, the Honorable uh, Prime Minister will make time. We have asked him to give us a date. We are waiting for it. And when he does, we will give him a similar opportunity to be able to pitch and to speak uh, 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 to us. And we will uh, honor him in that manner. You know, there is uh, somebody who talked about, uh, you know, Deputy President, you said you are the only one in Bomas. But I hope you remember that uh, there was Jerusalem a dance in Bomas. Yeah, so you are not alone. <laughs> we are also there. <laughs> yes, about Jerusalem a dance. And, uh, so I would like to ask that people who are running as candidates that are this side, to stand up. You might have been in this entourage or not, or our delegates, just stand up. Okay. Uh, any candidate, anybody running for any seat that is in this crowd, some came with the deputy president, some came uh, as our delegates, and others uh, with uh, the other uh, candidates, uh, just stand up. We would like to have some time to pray for all of you uh, and to present you before God, to protect you and uh, to give you a good run across the country. Okay, if you like to stand. Edmund, are you running? Okay, 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 thank you. You're not running. Okay, thank you. So then sit, you sit. Yes, you sit, thank you. So I would like to ask uh, the chairman because uh, this is his meeting. He will make a decision of how to pray for these men and women that have offered themselves for leadership in this country. Uh, Bishop uh, David Oginde. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, thank you for availing yourselves and thank you, uh, DP, for insightful discussions this uh, morning. We have been truly, truly informed and educated on several matters and I'm sure our leaders are in a better position 
uh, both to make decisions and help their members make decisions based on the things that they are hearing. As we mentioned, uh, we are giving this opportunity to all our candidates, presidential candidates. Uh, Dr. Uh, Mr. Sakaja there has just whispered to me, and when are the governors coming? <laughs> so it means that he's appreciating that this is a good idea. So we'll see how to uh, make that happen. But we truly appreciate. There are 47 independent candidates for the position of president. Independent. Then those who are in parties, I don't know how many they are. So the, the competition is very high. And a number of them are also believers. So we will hear that uh, especially many times. <laughs> so God will give us wisdom on how to go about it. But thank you very much. So we were not able to invite everybody uh, to this forum just because of the limitations of time. So we made a choice, maybe wrongly or rightly, to bring first of all those who have been in the field for quite a long time and whose uh, names are out there in the lips of the public. That is the uh, Deputy President, uh, William Ruto, and the Right Honorable uh, Raila Odinga, uh, who are leading the main political uh, formations in this country to come and share with us their views. But we have also those people who are from with, inside the church, uh, members of the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya. And these are the two candidates who are in that category. So that is how we tried to deal with the issue of numbers uh, because there's a very large number. So it is not discriminatory, but it's basically to um, see how do we manage the time that we have. Given another opportunity, we may invite others to also join us. So at this time, we want to pray together with you and uh, just commit you to the Lord so that as you go out there, uh, God will go before you and God will make a way for you. Ours is to cast the vote. That's what the Bible says that the decision of that vote is determined by the Lord. So I want to ask our vice chair to come and lead us in praying for these candidates. Our vice chair is a very passionate prayer warrior. And so if you keep seeing him coming here, it's because we are utilizing the talents that we have and the gifts in the house. Uh, if there is anything that palpates in his heart, is prayer. So every time we're in board meeting, he keeps saying, why don't we pray? Some of us are business oriented. Uh, but uh, Vice Chair, please call on the name of the Lord on behalf of these men and women so that God would go before them. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we're going to be praying extremely shortly. Um, my name is Joseph Likavo. I come from Eldoret. Your Excellency, my former member of parliament. Thank you so much. Bill. I would like to mention just some things and I'll ask all of us to stand and pray together with them. I want to recommend a small book to you. A small book done by Professor Kenoti. I've mentioned that before. He talks about Afri um, Africa's problems and the role of the church. Small book. And Professor Kinoti summarizes that book with a group of people and says, Africa's problem is poverty. And so the poverty is used, which leads to many other issues. That African people, a lot of them are dehumanized. That there are diseases in Africa which don't exist in some parts of the world. Sleeping sicknesses, malaria, bilharzia. They do not exist in many other parts of the world except Africa. Congo's economy, it is said, was at bar with the U.S. in terms of dollar at independence. I'm not too sure, but I need to confirm that. So there is, we need to bring prayer to God because God answers prayer. God answers prayer. And I want to guarantee you, and I said yesterday, at 
times we come to a place we look at the situation and we despair and we think nothing can change God can change things in seconds that's why he is God we're going to pray over the following things number one we want to affirm that the nation belongs to God that is according to Acts chapter 17 verse 26 the Apostle Paul told the Athenians who are extremely extreme philosophers he told them that it is God who brought us out of one blood into the many nations we are today and determined boundaries and the people who should live in those boundaries and for Kenya this is our time church we must make a difference number two prayer item is to know that God raises leaders Daniel chapter 2 verse 21 he sets others up and brings others down and I want you to be assured this morning that there's nobody too powerful to be brought down by God and there's nobody too small to be raised up by God God can raise people and he celebrates God celebrates when when nobodies become somebodies so do not be scared by figures do not be scared by what you see God is able the God of the Bible there are too many gods I'm talking about the God of the Bible I'm talking about the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that is the God we talk about you know I was in a place and I was told don't mention Jesus just say God no it's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ so he raises people and sets up others Psalm 75 verse 7 deals with that also number three point we're going to pray over is that the quality of, of our lives depends on the quality of our leaders the Apostle Paul instructs us in first Timothy 2 verse 2 and of course you go to Proverbs 28 verse 2 to pray for those in leadership so that you can live in peace and I, I said the quality of leaders not the qualification I met, a, I met a medical doctor who was drunk and he was in a meeting and somebody took a worm put it in beer in a hot stuff alcohol and the worm died and that medical doctor who, who drinks was asked a question what do you learn from this his answer was I'm so glad I don't have worms in my stomach the lesson was not about worms the lesson was on danger of alcohol so qualifications can bury quality qualifications can replace quality qualifications can be mistaken for quality quality can be abused because of qualifications quality is inherent qualification is academic quality is deep qualifications on the surface if you build quality qualifications have a big role to play without quality qualifications can be abused we need leaders of quality two more points we need to know that there is a battle for the soul of Kenya there is a battle for the soul of this country a serious battle the Apostle Paul admonishes us and he says we wrestle not against flesh and blood the coming election is between God's kingdom and the kingdom of darkness period and we as the church have to realize that if we prevail in prayer we're going to prevail in the ballot boxes if we just talk talk as a church and we don't prevail in prayer and we don't exercise wisdom then at the end of the day we will sit down and do the usual thing we do God why did you give us this and God says you chose it 
So the battle is for the soul of the country. I do not want to go deeper than that. But there is a battle for the soul of this nation. And we as the church of Jesus Christ, because I believe with all my heart, I respect everybody else. And I respect every religion, by the way. You may be here, maybe you came with the, uh, the deputy president. Maybe you may be from another religion. I have no problem with the religion. I respect Muhammad. You have to be smart to have a billion people follow you. You have to be intelligent. I respect the Buddha. You have to be smart to have countries like Mongolia follow you. I respect Confucius, but let me tell you something. I don't see them in the list of those in heaven. What I see is that Jesus Christ welcomes the, the children of God in heaven. That's what matters to me and to you. I respect others, and I want to emphasize that there is a battle for this nation, and the church must take her place in prayer. And we need to go beyond prayer, a German. We need to go beyond prayer. We need to go beyond tongues. And finally, and this one I will read the scripture, and then we pray. Judges chapter 9, verse 1 to verse 4. Then Abimelech, the son of Jerubal, went to Shechem to his mother's brothers and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father. That is Judges chapter 9, verse 1. Verse 2 says, Please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem. Which is better for you, that all 70 of the sons of Jerubal, by the way, Jerubal is Gideon, of the sons of Jerubal reign over you, or that one reign over you? Remember that I am your own flesh and bone. And his mother's brother spoke all these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, and their heart was inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. So they gave him 70 shekels of silver from the temple of ba Baal Berith, you know Baal, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house in opera. Now there are many stories that follow that. Why am I reading this story? I'm reading it because of ethnic issues. I'm, I'm trusting God that this election will have nothing to do with ethnic biases. But shall it be an election of Kenyans by Kenyans. So that we will vote in men and women because they carry quality. I come from a market called Shinyalu. I was talking to somebody the other day and I challenged my member of parliament very candidly. I challenged him. And I told him, do you want me to give you a vote because you, because you come from Shinyalu, or do you want me to give you a vote because you, you, there is hope for this country? We need to pray. In one conclave a few years ago, some years ago, it must be 1999 or something, we sat in a conclave in the Bahamas, and Dr. Miles looked at us and said, in many parts of the world, what is called leadership is actually professional manipulation. We want to pray against professional manipulation. That God is going to give us a leadership in this country that Africa can celebrate. That Kenya will be sought. People will fly to this country to come and learn what did God do. They'll come and benchmark for this country. Do you believe God can do that? Can we pray that God is going to give us a government that will be benchmarked by African nations? That God will give us governor in Nairobi. Nairobi controls a lot of economy in this country. God can give us a governor in Nairobi who will, who will become a model. Do you believe that? We want to pray. So that we don't mix you up with the candidates. Candidates, please, you know, when a pastor stands here, he's in charge. So he can make you do some things that are crazy. Candidates, just come and stand over here. And then the rest of the church, let us stand on our feet. The, the, you can remain you we do honor you very much thank you this is my story this is my song pray 
facing my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Abarin Jema Rahayangu Yesundi Mo Kozi Wangu Abarin Jema Rahayangu Kindly stretch forth your hands. Heaven is going to make a serious decision this morning. Heaven is going to make a serious decision on state house. Heaven is going to make a serious decision on governorship, members of parliament. Can you just lift your voice and tell, ask heaven? This morning to look at Kenya favorably, the Kenya we love. and the earth the God our national anthem records and says O oh God of all creation bless this our land and nation Lord in the book of Psalm chapter 65 verse 2 it is said oh you who answer who hear prayer to you all flesh will come this morning we stand before you with complete trust in your ability to fight your battles to protect that which is yours that your place cannot be taken by man because it only you deserves it 
we give you glory we give you honor today we meet at the Nairobi Baptist Church and together with us are our leaders Lord we respect our leaders we honor our leaders for the scripture instructs us to do so it is you who puts them in authority and in this house the second highest leader of this nation is with us Lord we are grateful we are grateful for allowing him and the other two aspiring to be president and other officers to be here with us this morning and Lord from you the standpoint of your word we honor them and we pray this morning Lord that as they campaign and as they plan for the nation the Lord at the bottom of their hearts may you plant this word the nation belongs to you it is you who raised up the people who put boundaries in place to give us Kenya it is the same you who determined the season in which we should live and this is the time we are alive our forefathers lived in their times and went Lord it pleased you that in 2022 we be alive that evangelical alliance of Kenya be here at this time to make a contribution to the well wellness and welfare of this nation so Lord we thank you Lord you say in the book of Daniel you raise some people and bring down others Lord as the church we allow you raise up leaders put somebody in state house who will value you father deliver the church from any battles that may come because we made wrong choices Lord the scriptures cannot be challenged by any human and the scriptures say we are ambassadors of Christ and ambassadors are taken care of by their own nations they don't struggle what to eat in which house to live in their mother country takes care of them Jesus you say do not let your heart be troubled we are your ambassadors and we cannot ignore that we pray that God as your ambassadors on this earth raise up leaders in Kenya those who must go down let them go and those who must be risen let raise let them be raised by your hand O oh eternal God raise them for us set them up for us who can stop you who can hinder you who can prevent you who can challenge you who has more wisdom than you we ask you Lord to give us the leaders who will make the people of this country celebrate and without shame who will make the church preach the gospel across the Republic of Kenya who will make every part of Kenya safe Lord we pray for quality leadership Lord beyond qualifications quality leadership men and women whose hearts are full of the character of Christ Lord you said we should be in your image and in your likeness in your moral and spiritual characteristics and to operate like you by faith and by your word and so we pray Lord that may you grant us quality leaders grant Nairobi a quality governor this is our city it does not belong to Nairobians alone even those of us who live in other towns outside Nairobi it's a joy to have a quality respectful man and man or woman of integrity as the governor in this city every Lord there are people here who are members of Parliament we pray let their constituents receive quality leadership and father we also ask you to deliver us from a bimelech spirit the spirit that said vote for me because we share blood we are all Kenyans the leadership that come to power is for all of us so Lord we pray that give us leaders who will who will touch every corner of this country and be a blessing and so Lord we 
we raise our voices to battle against forces of darkness demonic agenda that has been established systems of wickedness voices that are determined from satanic altars spirits of witchcraft sorcery necromancy enchantments spells incantations bowing to idols instead of bowing to God father we ask you deliver the nation from any form of leadership that bows to the enemy of God this is the time in the history of this country Lord do something that will bring heaven joy every principality every power rulers of darkness of this age spiritual wickedness in high places the church of God the church of Jesus gathered at Nairobi Baptist Church passes a resolution this morning we will not allow your forces of darkness we will not allow demonic spirits we will not allow witchcraft and sorcery we will not allow works of darkness we will not allow necromancy bowing to demons to graves we will not allow them in the offices of governance this is our decision we refuse to allow this decision to be ne negated it's our choice and it remains so and father we decree and declare from the coast all the way to eastern northeastern central kenya nairobi all the way to nyanza and western kenya lord all these counties belong to you block the works of darkness block demonic transactions silent sacrifices of, of wickedness sack priests of darkness lord we sack every priest of darkness we sack them every sacrifice of darkness we waste it we nullify it and we declare the sacrifice of the blood of jesus christ will speak louder than any other sacrifice given in this country for the sake of the prosperity of kenya for the sake of the peace of kenya for the sake of the growth of kenya until kenya becomes a model in the nations of africa lord we lift kenya above all other nations the nations of africa we lift kenya and proclaim this our land this our nation will become an example after august 2022 make kenya the best place to desire to be on this continent and by this prayer we believe it is done by this prayer we believe it is answered and we decree and declare in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit let's shout an amen Let's be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let's be seated uh, so that I can ask uh, our excellencies to come down also. Uh, music team, please be coming. Uh, please, uh, now you can... Uh